Okay everybody, what we're going to have a look at today is the torque converter for a 5HP19 transmission. This was fitted to a BMW 2.5 litre straight 6 engine. So the torque converter itself uh, is specific to that. Uh, what I've got in front of me here is obviously the torque converter. I've cut it in half. I'll pull that apart in a moment. You can see I've just used an angle grinder there just to cut that apart. We also have the oil pump assembly as well as the input assembly. So we'll have a look at how all that fits uh, together. For how everything fits together, uh, the input assembly, a couple of things before I put everything uh, together. So you can see there's a hole here. There's a couple of holes here. They're also for oil flow. That's for the clutches inside the gearbox. But this one here is for the torque converter clutch. That one goes in there and actually comes out the top here. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Also on the oil pump here, there is oil flow. So there's actually two oil flows to the torque converter. There's another one which actually runs on the outside of here and on the inside of the input shaft here. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a moment as well. So how all this fits together, the transmission would have the input shaft and the stator uh, like this when everything's assembled. You can see the input shaft is obviously attached to down the bottom here and the stator shaft which is this uh, outer larger spline, this is actually bolted to the intermediate plate which is this one which is bolted to the transmission housing so this does not move at all. This is the one that spins the input shaft uh, to make the wheels turn. This one does not move at all. So we'll just put that to the side. Let's have a look at the, the torque converter itself. As you can see I've just cut it off. These three bolts here, these are what actually bolt to the, the flex plate or the flywheel which is the output from the engine. So whenever the engine is actually turning this thing is actually going to be turning in that direction. Uh, on the inside of here you can see there's actually a piece which is stuck to the inside that's actually for the torque converter clutch that's actually the friction material. here. Uh, there's just a funny looking bearing. I think we'll pull it out in a moment. And this part is in two pieces. This is actually the piston for the torque converter clutch that would actually sit inside there and it's this part here that you can see is slightly worn which would be pressing against that friction material. This is the turbine, which is the thing that's actually connected to the uh, input shaft of the transmission. We have, as you would expect, some bearings, and we have the, the stator. Another bearing on the other side, and then this is our uh, input from the engine, or the impeller. So how does all this fit together? Uh, first things, uh, on this side here you can see there's these two slots. They lock into the, the pump, the oil pump which is on the inside. So the whole time, like we saw before, when the engine is turning, this whole mechanism here is constantly turning around. So if that's turning, this is locked into the oil pump, so obviously there's oil pressure provided for the transmission by the oil pump. So let's just slot that down. Here, and now that's fully seated. So this would be turning in a, because the engine would be on this side, transmission's obviously on that side, that would be turning in a clockwise direction. As you can see from the little blades that are inside here, this would be full of oil and the oil would be forced to the outside and around in sort of a circular motion. If you look at the 
other side here, which is the, the turbine, it's going to go around from the outside in here and round here. So it's going to be sort of a circular motion if that was placed on top like that. This thing is connected to the input shaft of the transmission so that the motion of the oil being pushed to the outside forces this to move and hence the transmission parts start to move. One of the problems with it though is that would create all this circular motion which actually creates a loss of torque. So what they do is they put a stator in here. Now the stator locks into those stator splines like we saw before and the stator itself has a, a one-way clutch on it. As you can see, you can turn in that direction, but it won't turn in that direction. We looked at before how the oil flows around in this direction and then round to there. That would want to push the oil through uh, these blades and trying to push it forward uh, and to create efficiencies inside the, the torque converter. It stops it so it actually directs as the thing turns. Uh, the oil into the correct angle onto the blades below to make it uh, much more efficient. Apparently that, especially at slow speeds, creates a, a torque a multiplier effect. So, uh, we then have our bearing set that goes on. And we're now going to put on top the turbine. Now we saw before that there are two oil flows that go into this. There's the one that sort of goes on the outside of this input shaft and down actually goes down through the splines of the stator shaft and the other one that comes out here. So we can either come in from up here or out the top here and I'll show you why that's important in a moment. For the, the turbine there are a couple of seals. There's an o-ring that's around the edge here and there's also a seal on the inside here. So that goes on and that just locks into those splines. So as you can see, if this turns, that oil, uh, that viscous coupling is going to make this turn which is connected to the input shaft and hence the, the transmission is going to turn. That's basically how the torque converter actually works. Now what we'll look at is the torque converter cloud lockup clutch. You can see there are holes around the outside here. That's where that of the uh, the lower of the two flows of oil can actually come out. The other one obviously is going to come out the top here. So it can either come out of these small holes here or the ones on the top. Now, if I put on this piston, see now that flow for that oil is either going to come from underneath the piston or on the outside of it. So depending on which way the, the flow is actually directed, then it either pushes down here so it disengages on the clutch or it pushes up from underneath and it actually engages the clutch. So there you go the torque converter and how it works.